Morning, everybody. Since I have the mic, I thought uh, before thanking and doing the word of thanks, uh, let me share a couple of my thoughts. In, I mean, a lot of it has already been covered by uh, my colleagues here on the dais. I think they, and I have a problem, right? I have a problem that in any such forum that we come, we always talk about and define and redefine and further re redefine what the problem statement is. But I think we all know what the problem statement is. We have been talking about industry academia partnerships coming together, or as I call it, the golden triage of government, industry, and academia coming together and, and trying to collaborate and trying to integrate and then bring, come up with solutions. But I think it's time we started talking about solutions. It's time we started internalizing that this is a real problem. And if we want to fix it, then there are ways and means of fixing it rather than just talking about it in seminars and conferences ad nauseum. Mr. Mr. Ranjan talked about gap analysis, what we teach versus what the what is relevant for somebody, either in research or in jobs, maybe five years, 10 years down the line. And I keep saying this. Uh, I, I don't tire of saying this. I think we are teaching our students and learners today what should have been taught 10 years back for something and readying them for something 10 years down the line. So we're teaching students what we should have taught 10 years back and expect that they'll be ready 10 years ahead to tackle the problems then. 10 years later, what's going to happen? One doesn't even know. Two years back, nobody even talked about chat GPT. Right? Today, I think the entire ecosystem of programming and computer science is really rethinking about where they stand. We should also talk about, and maybe in the panels today, the three panels that we have today, whether it's the research and innovation panel, the digital panel, or the learning panel, we should clearly talk about outcome-driven learning and outcome-driven education. We should put a fix on how do we deal with internships and apprenticeships. We should really clearly put a fix on research associates, how, what drives research, and what is it that industry, the government, and the academia are willing to commit in the form of real dollars to make research happen. We all talk about QS ranking. right? I'm on the planning board of Manipal, and, I, and every six months we talk about where are we. And every time we kind of sit back and say, hey, you know what? Research is that one single parameter that tilts the, the scale as far as QS ranking is concerned. How many of us know that uh, the least amount of research happens in humanities and liberal arts? And how many of us know that uh, for each liberal arts and humanities research paper is actually equivalent to three or four uh, in medical or in technical journals? So therefore, I think we need to pick our battles and make sure that we spend money behind each of these researchers. We keep talking about employment-driven and research-driven institutes. right? And I have a problem. We keep talking about NEP 2020. right? No, NEP 2020 is a policy, is a guideline. I'm not too worried about what the policy says, but I'm more worried about what the policy does or what we do with that policy. I mean, each one of us sitting here, whether we are from academics or from industry, we need to take a step back and figure out if we have actually understood the real essence of what NEP 2020 wants us to do. Three years down the line, I can clearly, I can clearly say with a lot of conviction, and I'm not too happy saying this, but I think NEP 2020 or the essence of NEP 2020 or what it can do has not been clearly understood at all, either by industry or by academics. So I think time has come for us to just take a step back, not worry about the problem statement, but clearly look at the look at the solution. And I'm glad that Dr. Chilton talked about uh, we'll be world leaders only if we collaborate. If if the three of them, the government, industry, and academia collaborate, only then we will we will be world leaders. And how to create the right ecosystem, the right actors who will perform the right functions, interconnections are not happening effectively. I think it's for us, this group, with Fiki being somebody who, being a catalyst or an accelerator, 
to kind of bridge the gap between industry and academia and come out with very clear solutions, very clear, which not only addresses the problem of today, but tries to address the problem 10 years down the line. And I think that that's where we are. I hope to see some of you in the panels, uh, uh, and I hope some of you will really ask questions, which will set us thinking, and will drive us, will drive FIKI and the FIKI leadership to take and pick up the right initiatives to drive, to make sure that the outcome is assured five years down the line and 10 years down the line. I don't want us to talk, keep talking about problems, problems, and problems. We all know what that is. Having said that, I think I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Chintan. I think uh, this has been a, uh, I'm meeting him for the first time. I think uh, uh, I was joking with him off stage saying that uh, innovation and his name, Chintan, go hand in hand. So I think innovation is in the right hands. Uh, Dr. Vidya, of course, my chair, who's, uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether she's online, but uh, she's there. I'm here, I'm here. Okay, okay, okay. Thanks, thank, thanks, Vidya. So I think uh, Dr. Vidya for uh, opening the statement and giving us, I think the perspective on research is so very important. And I think research institutes and teaching institutes, as NEP calls out, they have two different purposes and both are, I would say the research purpose is very, very telling and very, very important. So thanks, Vidya, for that. Uh, Dr. Saxena, thank you so much uh, for being our mentor. It's always a pleasure to hear you talk. You always bring about that one single point which uh, gets us thinking. Um, Dr. Mr. Mahapatra, thanks for your, uh, uh, I think probably we need more people like you who are both, uh, who've, been in <laughs> who've been in academia and in, now in academia and before in industry. Um, and I think uh, academia would also would also see a lot of difference happening if they open their arms and embrace a lot of people from industry to come and teach. Um, because I think industry has got a lot to contribute by way of academics too, uh, especially in the curriculum side, especially in making sure that the relevance of the curriculum is, is kind of uh, met. Um, I thank uh, uh, I thank my co-chair, Sovik, and all of you be present here today. I'd like to see some of you, in, like I said, in the panels. Ask us tough questions. Tell us your views so that we can do something about it. Thank you very much.